So now, I can get this sucker all hooked up to the television. So before I try putting a disc in or anything, let me just see what happens when I turn it on. Whoa, what's that weird noise? You know what? This is the other player that I bought when I got the SJT100. That's right, the same place sold me two broken Select Division players. However, there is a good thing to come of this. I have another Select Division player of the exact same model. So here's my other SJT200. Now you may recognize that I used an SJT200 in the intro to one of my previous videos showing that it didn't work. This was the actual player that I used and at the time it didn't work. This was actually the first Select Division player that I bought and it wasn't until after I bought a couple more that I decided to open this one up and see if I could figure out what was wrong with it. I mean by this time I had a bunch that didn't work which means that I had some spare needles so I thought if this one didn't have a needle let me just try to pop in another one. Now it turns out that this player actually had six of these in it. Now as you can see this one is all scratched to hell and dirty. This one will never play again. It's also cracked in a couple of places. And there were somehow six of these jammed within the player. Including one of my own discs that I tried to get the player working with. So I simply removed all the discs and you know what? Player works perfectly. I don't know how there was any problem with it before but now it will, it'll play any disc that you give it. Let's try it out. So now I decided to remove the top of the player so you can see what's going on. As I said before, this is one of the more later models, so it has a sort of automatic feature, so you don't have to toggle back and forth between load and play and all this other stuff. You can just push it a disc and it'll automatically go to work. So let's get our disc back here. Slide it in the front. You can see it pulls the disc in, takes out the caddy, and then pushes it out. And it loads and goes right on the spinning. If you look up at the screen, it goes right to playing the movie. So now you might be asking how to get the disc out. Well, that's relatively simple. We switch it over to reject. You can hear it spin down, and now it'll push up the disc. So the disc goes back into the holder, and now I can just take my caddy, angle it right, slide it in. It'll take the caddy, and then it'll push it back out. Light is green, trap is clean. So now that you've seen all my players and all my discs, you might be asking, is CEDs really worth it? Well, when it comes to all the stuff that I have, I mean, it really didn't cost a whole lot of money if you think about it in the long run. I mean, those two broken players, I also got a ton of discs with those, maybe 70 discs. And that whole total, the two players and the discs, was about 50 bucks. The, uh, the Zenith player that I showed, that was 30 bucks, that also came with about maybe 30 discs. And then the uh, the working SJT200, that was, oh, I don't know, I think $13 on an online auction. And then the the original RCA, the older one, I think that was about 10 bucks at auction. Now, some of the discs that I own, I actually got those for free just because nobody at an auction wanted them. So that's pretty cool. But the thing is, if you're going to go and start collecting CEDs or something, you should really know that what you're getting yourself into is a format that you know it's not even as known as Betamax so you have very little support for this kind of stuff I mean if you don't have a needle good luck trying to find another one and you know if something doesn't work on your player you really only have the option of either going online to eBay and buying one for a lot of money or you know searching around till you find another player for you to get parts for and then that player you get might not even have the parts you need so this is really more of like a kind of a novelty sort of hobby I don't really think much of this stuff is very collectible, but I don't know, somebody out there might be selling these things for big bucks. But right now it's just, you know, something to keep me occupied, something that's interesting. And you know, it, it is really interesting if you think about it. You have video from a vinyl disc. I mean, who would have thought that that was possible? So at the end, you know, you end up having a lot of broken players and a lot of broken stuff. 
but you know you can just put that towards parts towards other players you might get and eventually just throw out stuff that you don't even need so it's a pretty cool little thing that you could collect or you know accumulate if you want to say that but um, really all the titles I think all of them have been released on other formats so it's really only a sort of a novelty thing so I hope you guys like that segment and if I get any more CED related stuff I'll definitely be sure to share it with you hope you liked that segment uh, without further ado I'm gonna go right into the next segment which is holiday item review so it's the holiday season now so I thought that I would do something a little bit different from my reviews and I would review some stuff that you might be able to get for people friends relatives around the holidays depending on their interests so to start out I'm gonna show you some books now the first one is called from Betamax to Blockbuster and this one is by Joshua Greenberg and it's from the MIT Press and it's a very interesting book about home video all the way from when it was released for you to buy for hundreds of dollars a tape you know to first being able to rent it and it just keeps going on about video rental and how video has changed basically the world so what's interesting about this book is that it has a lot of first-hand accounts some of it is given you know in a sort of researched format but there's a lot of quotes directly from people in the video industry as well as people who own stores and stuff like that. It's really interesting if you're fascinated by old video technology and you can get this for about three to four dollars on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. It's, I mean, you know, you can take a gamble with it. Now the second book I have is Phone Losers of America. Now this is from PLA and uh, Brad Carter who you might know as RBCP and um, he actually signed it for me here. I got a pre-order. I think it was about $14, $15. And it's a really cool book. It's about 200 pages, maybe a little bit more, almost 300 pages. And it's actually a very quick read. Uh, most of the stuff in here can be found on the PLA website. Um, but although there, I'm pretty sure that there's also some sections that were here just for the book. There's a there's a lot of detail here and it's very beautifully written so I highly recommend this one if you're interested in the world of phone freaking as well as a lot of there's a lot of comedic elements in it too which keeps it very entertaining and it's a really funny book and very inform informational as well now going on to some DVDs here this is Jason Scott's Get Lamp now you can already tell from the box that it's pretty cool let me open it up here now Start out, it costs forty dollars, and uh, this is from the same guy who did the BBS documentary. And if you ask me, that's that price is very much worth it for this. He puts a lot of effort into his documentaries, and they're very well done. This one comes with a collectible coin, so you can get a collectible coin with this. And then here's the inside box. I mean, if you just look at this art here, let me open this up. I mean, it's really beautiful what's done here. It's a two disc set. And it talks about text adventures all the way from, you know, the first computer text adventures to the choose your own adventure books. And basically how text adventures are responsible for all the video games that we have right now. And as in usual fashion with Jason Scott, if you've ever seen the BBS documentary, he gets interviews from people that are so deep in the industry that would probably be overlooked by anybody else trying to do this. He is very meticulous with choosing these people. And it's just an amazing documentary. I mean, just about every perspective is shown. And it's it's really great how he got so many people to share all their points of view on the subject. Now, if you have like an IPTV lover, you can also go with something like the Pure Ownage Season 1 DVD set as well as the CD. So you have the soundtrack and inside here this is a four disc set so it has the first season of pure ownage hopefully they'll continue up with the second season again it's been delayed for a long time and um, for the DVD set and the soundtrack it's a total of thirty dollars I mean who doesn't love pure ownage if you ask me I think it's worth the money even though you can get all the episodes online I mean you have tons of extras you have commentary it's just it's a really cool thing now moving away from DVDs and books, you might have someone who's, I don't know, a little more electronically oriented. So something really 